Welcome back to the Chess EPA division. It's time for an operations video, I think. We've done several videos uh, over the last month on other things, so it's time for that. And in my previous videos, we've discussed the fact that the Chessy system, and this is a B&O uh, division of the Chessy system, uh, was a very, very uh, heavily EMD power influenced railroad. And in a long time ago, I think it was my GP7 project, I made a reference uh, to an alternative power and finally happy to report that we have a slight amount of uh, power diversity on the railroad presently. And that being in the form of an Alco C425, and it is the rationale, as I've mentioned previously, I think, is that uh, in 1974, which is two years before Conrail, the Erie Lackawanna, uh, both Erie Lackawanna and Chessy had yards in Salamanca, New York, uh, and Erie Lackawanna actually had trackage rights down to Du Bois uh, up until 1976 when the EL was folded into Conrail. And uh, what a perfect opportunity, I thought, to add some Alco power. So this is a uh, Kato uh, C425 that I purchased used. Um, had previously been numbered, I think, out of the factory 2457, and the person I bought it from had scratched off the 7 in an effort to start renumbering it. So I finished the job and uh, renumbered it 2461. Uh, I'm pretty sure 2461 is also... Well, it was one of the original, I think, 12 C425s uh, EL bought. Um, 2461, I think, is still uh, in operation up at the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western, painted as, is still, still wearing the number 2461. And uh, DL&W have a uh, very similar, similar paint scheme to EL, just, just slightly different lettering. So, uh, another question for everyone, too. So, I've done a little research, although not exhaustive. Uh, these are two tank cars uh, loaded with creosote. Obviously the white one probably wouldn't be a creosote car, but I'm still still manufacturing more um, leased tank cars. Uh, they're really hard to find in a 1974 you know, vintage. Uh, that's when the frameless cars I think were first coming out. So trying to find some older ones that don't have billboards. Uh, I've just gone to buying some undecorated ones or uh, stripping the paint off of others to get to uh, you know the finished product like this. So I have some other. These are even though three domes are unlikely, um, at least with the white, it seems a little bit more like a chemical tank car uh, than a, a petroleum product tank car. Regardless, these are both uh, loaded with creosote, and they are headed for the uh, Burke Parsons creosote plant, um, which is in Falls Creek. And uh, the research I've done shows that you know, it seems like they tried to, or the regulations required to have buffer cars, probably different regulations than they are today, but I keep seeing, you know, if the consist permitted. Well, unfortunately, this is only a two-car train, and they both happen to be tank cars of creosote. So, I don't know. For the time being, I'm not going to use uh, spacer cars. On the way back, uh, we'll take a look at the switch list over here. Um, on the way back, I think we're going to have about five cars. Let me see what we got here. Let's see what we're dropping off. Actually, we're dropping off six cars, so we should have enough space on the way back um, to rectify that, at least from the spacer's point of view. Because I model um, with staging that's accessible, um, I do a lot of, uh, just to help me sort out industries and, for my own benefit, create some uh, operational purpose. Uh, I do, and you can see here we have Salamanca and then Clarion Junction, and I've already scratched those off because I took care of that switching uh, in staging, so that's already taken care of. So we're really only dealing with the town of Du Bois here, and you can see we've got a whole bunch of pickups to do, 
and uh, a couple of set outs. Some of the set outs, uh, actually everything except the work at Triangle Suspension Systems, which is at the other end of town, everything is right here uh, at Du Bois Yard, which is again not quite properly located relative to uh, Falls Creek and Du Bois. But, um, and the B&O has a uh, GP7 sitting here, and that's the local uh, power that they generally use for Du Bois, at least what I use for Du Bois. Um, the Penn Central Interchange track then is the one with the uh, the brown B&O box car. So uh, B&O doesn't uh, seem to care too much about making life easy for EL, so uh, they're just leaving the GP7 there on one track, so it shortens up how much track uh, EL even has to operate. So we'll have to uh, work around that and uh, I will start our switching. So the first thing we'll do is uh, shove back into the yard um, and we'll tack the caboose, which is a B&O caboose because I still haven't gotten an EL caboose yet. Uh, we'll back that and park that on the interchange track uh, temporarily just to get it out of our way for switching. Failed to mention, although I'm sure none of you will be surprised, this is a TCS Wow Sound uh, diesel decoder that I installed in the uh, you know, stock just DC unit. Okay, so we've got these two creosote cars that we need to take into Burke Parsons Bowley, which is only temporarily on this end track with all these gondolas. And uh, we've got two pickups, I believe, from Burke Parsons. Yep, we have uh, a gondola full of finished railroad ties, uh, which is this one here, uh, 231, last three digits. And then we've got an empty creosote car, eight, uh, 89976, all the way at the end of the string here. So I believe probably what we ought to do is pull that whole cutout. And uh, maybe we'll leave the creosote cars here, actually, because we'll tack them on the end. So let's try it that way. I haven't done this particular job too many times, so I'm still learning myself as to how I want to operate this. Naturally, the switch lists change from time to time, too, so it's not always the same, which is thankful. <laughs> Also replaced the uh, the Cato or Cato, however you pronounce it. The uh, original manufacturer had a central uh, incandescent bulb with two really long uh, light tubes to get to either end. So I modified that heavily and put LEDs uh, at either end. Grab onto these two creosote cars and we'll spot them first. Then we'll sort out which ones we need.
scenery is not done yet, but clearly this is about uh, <laughs> using a new locomotive and not about scenery. So I apologize for that, but this will be more of a uh, video for the ears than the eyes with the Alco. Of course, maybe I'm just the one who gets excited about that because I've been listening to EMDs for three years on my railroad, so. set the tank that we need off and that black gondola going across the bridge right now that's the next one we need so I'll shove the rest of these back into Burke Parsons I could have stacked that right on the Grand Trunk and Western boxcar instead of running it in on that track, but we'll set it ahead of the tank car. run these two gondolas back in and I think that concludes, I'll have to check the switch list, but I think that concludes the work at Burke Parsons. Ultimately Burke Parsons will be uh, run the whole length of the uh, bench work up here and have a pair of tracks. The prototype looks like it had maybe connections to both what, what is the Penn Central, what was the Penn Central and Chessie, so because there's actually a a switchback um, in the track work that's there now I couldn't figure out a way to fit that in and quite honestly I think it's going to be challenging enough uh, work to switch without that so I didn't work too hard to force it but. so there'll be a pair of tracks that run all the way down and I'll probably build the building up against the far backdrop to be determined Shove these to the end of my temporary track here. That's far enough. Okay. So we took care of 231 and 89976. So we picked up these two up here. And the other work at Burke Parsons, we set out the two creosote cars. That's taken care of. So all four box cars in the yard that are on that second track, starting with the Grand Trunk and Western one, those are all pickups. And the only one that we have to do anything with is BNO 469010. That's a set out at Triangle Suspension Systems. And while we're at Triangle Suspension Systems, we've got an empty diesel fuel car to pick up. Um, and again, that's speculation on my part. They're not connected to the railroad anymore. 
Uh, but they do look like they've got large tanks at Triangle Suspension Systems, so I don't know if their annealing furnace still does run on diesel or uh, if it did and they just didn't remove the tanks or if those are tanks of something completely different. But so far, that's what I'm working with, and uh, we're just going to pretend they're diesel cars. Happened to look up there. It looks like our 469010 happens to be at the head of the block here. So we'll grab our gondola and tank that we picked up. Push them against the blue Grand Trunk car. And we'll have to turn our train to run back to Salamanca. And when doing so, should put the 469010 at the front of our train, which should make the work pretty easy at Triangle. Well, we spot these interchange cars. 